Fire in the Library is a game of saving books and pushing luck to the very brink. It plays for 1-6 to six players in under an hour. At the start of a round, players draft turn order cards based on where their current point value is, with the player in last place choosing first. There are advantages and disadvantages to turn order as each card has varying levels of point potential and risk factors. For instance, the person that draws first has a higher risk of ending their turn in disaster, but they can quickly earn bravery points if they're lucky, whereas the player that draws later has a much safer go at drawing, but bravery points are more difficult to obtain. Tool cards can also be earned and used in ways that will aid your quest to rescue all of this precious knowledge. As cubes are drawn from the bag blindly, players place them on their turn order cards, choosing when to stop or being forced to if they either draw a second fire cube or draw fire cube when on a danger square. Once a player stops, they either score the points for their round or if things didn't go their way, fire spreads. When the fire spreads, cards are removed from the library based on the books that were drawn that turn. This causes the end of the game to be one step closer, book values are changed, and fire potentially added to the draw bag. Then the next player goes and play continues on until the library is burned to the ground. A push your luck game is essentially exactly what it sounds like. Players are given choices to either continue on and potentially get more points or stop, play it safe, and retreat with the points that you've already earned. Now, Fire in the Library is true to its core in that it takes that mechanism that's so familiar with push your luck games, but it throws in a few extra spices to heat things up. The most obvious change up to things lies in the tool cards, an entire deck of cards full of opportunity, full of options for you to change fate as it were. Now, one of the big appeals of a push your luck game is the simplicity of them. You make one choice, stay or go, keep going or retreat. With the addition of tool cards, that pure formula of stay or go, yes or no, keep going, retreat, is done away with and a few complications are added. But it's these tool cards that are integral into what makes Fire in the Library stand out from other options. The complication that they add to the game is minimal, but it adds another layer of decision points to the game, creating a only slightly more complex gameplay feel, uh, but with more interesting decisions. And that's gonna be a big theme in what this game has to offer. Look, blind luck in this game is huge. And if you know that's something you dislike, then right off the bat, you are not going to like Fire in the Library. If you're even looking at this type of game, you should know whether or not that aspect of it is going to affect your viewpoint of it. But it's important to emphasize the fact that blind luck isn't everything in this game. As I mentioned, the tool cards before add an element of being able to change your fate a bit. There's also the addition of the turn order cards, which to me is the most interesting, interesting thing about this game. With the turn order cards, players choose their order in which they want to pull cubes out of the bag first. With the person at the beginning of the round who's in last place choosing their card first, the person in first place choosing last. That decision point, adding another interesting decision point to this game, uh, is the difference between pushing your luck and risking a lot to earn a lot of points, playing it safe and choosing to be the second, third, or fourth person to draw in a game, or playing it completely safe and saying, I want to go last. I want to make sure that I can uh, pull books and get points with, with no reason to risk trying to get bravery points. And yeah, I really enjoy push your luck games, pure push your luck games. Diamante or Ink and Gold, it's a game where you just make a single decision, stay or go, and every time you make that decision, it's super tense and it's not, it's not a difficult game to grasp. And neither is Fire in the Library, but what Fire in the Library does is it takes those interesting, tense choices and it gives you more of them. It spreads them out over the course of the game. So yeah, you are pulling cubes out of a bag, hoping not to get a red cube that's going to burn your library down, but you also have to decide, do I use this tool now? Do I choose to be the first person in to try to grab the most books to get the most points? Do I play it safe and risk potentially losing the game? And that's what makes Push Your Luck games so fun, is the tense, quick, interesting choices. So in Fire in the Library, instead of taking just one concentrated dose of stay or go, it spreads that tension out over a course of a number of small choices and decisions to make each just as pressing, each just as stressful as the, as the rest. Another standout aspect of this game is the beautiful illustrations. As the library burns, you physically see the fire spread throughout the four quadrants of the library. It adds a visceral, emotional feel to the game almost, while not overly complicating any of the gameplay speed or mechanical elements to it. And it's not just a stylistic choice. As the library burns, as certain areas of the library burns, the books in those sections become more and more valuable. There's a pressing urgency, which 
changes the course of those small decisions that you make. At the beginning, you are hoping to pull books, and that's it. But as the game progresses, different types of books become worth different types of points. So while you certainly don't want to draw a red cube, a purple cube may be far more valuable to you than a yellow cube. And so as you do, as you reach your hand into the bag and pull out a cube, you begin to hope not just not to get red, but to pull a certain type of cube from it. At its core, Fire in the Library does a fantastic job of highlighting the thrills of victory and the agony of defeat in each individual little choice that you make and how that plays out in your own personal game. The production value is something that I really love, with the exception of the score track, which is um, right on the inside of the box. It's not something I particularly love. It's functional, it works, um, that is what it is, but really that's my only gripe with the game itself. It has more rules than something like Ink and Gold, and so, you know, in certain instances, I may turn to Ink and Gold over Fi in the library when I'm with a group of people that just want to sit down and play something with little to no explanation. But if you're playing with a group of people that can grok even the most simple of rule sets, Fire in the library is not going to be a big barrier of entry here. Taking everything into consideration, Fire in the library is not only a solid push your luck game, but it's a top tier push your luck game. And if you're looking for that type of excitement, if you're looking for that type of experience in the game, Fire in the Library is quite possibly the game that you were looking for, and something that uh, I'm really glad that I had a chance to take a look at. So if that interests you, check it out, Fire in the Library. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.